Should you put your music in stock music websites where you can earn royalty-free money? Or should you pitch your music to TV film sync licensing libraries to secure that back-end royalty income? So in other words, to stock or to sync? That is the question for today's video. Welcome to Sync My Music. My name is Jesse, and for the last 14 years, I've been creating full-time income with my music through the sync licensing industry. So I have not gotten involved personally with the stock library, stock website side of the business, but I definitely have had many students that I've coached and mentored throughout the years uh, go down that path and inform me a lot about the pros and the cons, what's worked for them, what's not worked for them. And so in this video, I want to share my opinion opinion, my approach to these two different complementary but sometimes competing sides of the licensing business so that you can decide which one you think would be better for you and which way you want to go. And also, I'm going to bias exposed here, let you know why I feel sync licensing, TV film sync licensing, the path that I decided to take is the superior path, why I think it's the smarter path to take for securing full-time, sizable, passive back-end royalties and income in your life for the next 5, 10, 15, 20, maybe even longer uh, years, decades into your future. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to talk about some of the key differences between the two and why you might want to consider one versus the other. But again, my bias is going to be towards sync. So here we go. Number one, stock music is royalty-free if you're not aware of that. So these are these websites where Anybody can essentially upload music to them and they're essentially going to be going after clients that are not going to have back-end royalty uh, options with their production. So this can be podcasts, this can be uh, YouTube videos, it could be smaller online campaigns, but for the most part, these are going to be smaller clients that just want to pay 50 bucks, 100 bucks to use some music for some sort of a production and they're not going to be responsible for paying any back-end royalties. So these websites sprouted up as, a, as you know serving that demand in the marketplace. So you just need to know that if you sign up primarily with stock music websites, don't count on any back-end royalties because that's really not the business that they're in. However, the back-end money that you can see, it wouldn't be in the form of royalties, but it could be in the form of repeated sales. So if you upload some amazing, great, high-quality music and that music continuously gets sold to new clients on a non-exclusive basis, there are websites and music out there, there are tracks out there that can certainly earn passive income throughout the years as it goes on. So those are just for the repeated sales, but not for performance royalties, and I'll explain in just a little bit why that's a big difference. Now, on the flip side, sync libraries, so putting your music in TV film sync licensing libraries, can not only generate you back-end royalties for every time a particular track airs in a TV show, let's say, but you can also earn additional royalties and additional income if, let's say, that TV show you had a placement in gets syndicated. So the most popular example of this is Seinfeld. Of course, Seinfeld ran when it originally aired from the late 80s until the mid to late 90s. But that show has essentially never been off the air. It's been syndicated and re-aired and gone to streaming platforms. And also, it's been... Uh, syndicated in other countries. So other country networks have also come and paid for the right and privilege to use Seinfeld in their local markets. And yes, if you happen to be that composer making the music for Seinfeld, you would definitely be a multi multi-millionaire. But even if you have small placements on reality shows, that kind of thing, that's basically where my bread and butter was. You do get paid Every single time that TV show airs, it doesn't matter in what market and what part of the planet and how many times, every single time it airs, you get paid. So that's the power of passive income that can literally snowball and build as you go into the sync licensing market, okay? Uh, number three here, stock music is basically what I call a cold business. What does a cold business mean? Well. These are basically websites that anybody can go to, any producer can create an account with, any producer can upload music, and pretty much what that means is that you're not gonna build any personalized relationships with these companies, right? Nobody's gonna get on the phone with you probably to say, hey, welcome to our website, we're so glad you started uploading music to us, let me fill you in on what's going on with our clients, what they need, what they're looking for, and let's build a relationship so that I can pitch your music to our clients and get you some more sales. That's really not happening with stock music libraries. There are too many composers, There's too 
too many submissions, too many bands, too many artists for anybody working at these companies to be able to give them personalized individual attention. So just know that if you go into that side of the business, it's much colder. You're not going to be getting any tip sheets probably or any sort of briefs or insights from the company on what their clients are looking for, how you can steer your music to be more useful for them. And if you do get anything like that, it's going to be a sort of mass email, um, you know, PDF essentially that every single licensing producer is going to get. And you're talking about probably hundreds, if not thousands of other people that are also getting the same information. So it's just colder. You're not going to get that personalized attention and, and relationship built on that side of the business, which means that many doors could potentially that you, maybe you could have potentially gotten into will just always be closed to you because you are always going to be a sort of anonymous person on a large, I call them kind of a cattle call website where you just have a lot of artists and musicians out there all clamoring for a couple of sales and it's just a little bit colder that way, okay? Now, sync music, again, on the other hand, not only has personal relationships, but it will require you to have a personal relationship with the library that you partner with or libraries that you partner with in order to have them become your advocates, okay? If you're not familiar, TV film uh, work requires a lot of communication, okay? It is not a cold business where you just kind of randomly upload music and hope something sticks. There are constant briefs being sent to a library. Briefs are essentially instructions from a client. It can be a TV show, a movie, a commercial, a trailer, video game, it doesn't matter. And they're specifically looking for particular types of music or a particular style of music for the campaign or the project they're working on. Those briefs do get sent to you individually in a library. And many times if you are, let's say, you're the rock producer and you got into a library known as the rock producer. Well, if a project requires some rock music, it'll probably be you and maybe one or two other producers on their roster that are getting that brief. They probably won't even mass email out a brief to all of their, their composers because they know they have a relationship with you. They're familiar with what you can do. And they know that if I send you this brief and start working with you on it, you'll be able to deliver them the music that's meant for that particular client. So it's much warmer. In fact, if you don't have the email addresses and more importantly, the phone numbers of the library CEOs or maybe they have a, an a and liaison, if you don't have these people's numbers in your phone, you probably are not doing something right in the sync licensing business. You really do need to be speaking to these people on a consistent basis. You definitely need to be emailing them on a weekly or if not a bi-weekly basis. And they need to know who you are and have a little bit of a personal investment in you. And that's definitely what's available in the sync licensing world. And of course, with those relationships built up, new opportunities will open up for you in the future. In my career, I've had people reach out to me that wanted to hire me and did hire me for really big, amazing custom opportunities, commercials, that kind of a thing, but only because I had a reputation in this business and because I had a name and I wasn't just an anonymous person uploading to a website. So you do have a reputation in the sync licensing business and it does work to your advantage if you are high quality, a producer and really, really professional, okay? So let's move on. Stock music is, for better or for worse, generally seen in the marketplace as the cheap music in the business, okay? Not to judge it or to say that the music is bad. In fact, there's a lot of amazing, high quality, great music on these stock libraries okay so i'm not judging it at all but it is the objective sort of honest reputation that is seen out there so if you're if you have a tv show you have a reality show if you have something really legitimate you probably are not going to be going to a stock music website to get your music and if you are it's because you're probably trying to fly way under the radar you don't want to be paying royalties you really are trying to get away with something so um, usually if you've got a legitimate offering it's a tv show movie commercial trailer anything that's going to be like literally viewed by millions of people you're not going to go to the cheap bin to get the music out to save a couple of dollars. You're going to go the legit way. You're going to go with a sync licensing library and you're going to make sure that you are um, making, uh, you're essentially licensing music from the proper sources that are going to give you the clearances to be able to do that. Okay. So just know that, that you're just going to be chasing in these stock music libraries, essentially the lowest common denominator. And what's been happening in the last couple of years I've been seeing is some of these stock library websites are changing their terms to literally give you less of the sale. So not only are you in that sort of cheaper bin of the music licensing industry, but your cut of what you're going to be earning from those sales is more and more going to the websites and less and less coming to you. So it's kind of like everybody's chasing the smallest amount of money out there. You can still earn money in these websites. I don't think they're all bad, but just know the trend and the direction of that is to chase smaller and smaller amounts of money. So that's not really promising for the future, I don't think. 
All right. And of course, on the other hand, uh, sync music is seen as more premium production music that requires often um, upfront sync fees. So sync fees are these one time fees you can earn when your tracks get placed. And let's say a, a commercial is going to air nationwide or even just in a certain uh, marketplace. Um, these clients that are putting together advertisements know they have to pay for music. And so if you are in a TV film sync licensing library, they will pay for that music if they need to okay so you can definitely require and and look forward to and expect higher sync fees and of course with that back-end royalty uh, income you can earn from these placements you'll just be seeing more premium numbers coming towards you and you definitely see um i mean what i'm seeing in this business is there are more and more opportunities to get placements okay so not only has the cable business sort of exploded in terms of how many different channels there were but now we've got the streaming industry is sort of exploding so there are more and more places for our music to get placed you actually can look forward to more and more of those opportunities coming down the pipeline which is really really cool now not to contradict everything that I've said in this video, but you actually can do both. You can put some music into sync licensing libraries and you can do some stock music licensing, okay, if you'd like to. Now, let me explain to you a strategy that I think makes sense. As I believe sync licensing is the more preferred premium direction to go in, you probably want to shoot for that first in terms of maybe you want to put together a full 10 or 10, 12 track album. You want to submit it to a really high quality library um, and hang tight to the end of this video. I'll show you how to find those companies. You pitch your music to them. Let's say they like seven of the tracks, but three of them just aren't really for them. They're not up to par. They're just not really digging it. What you can do with those extra tracks, rather than them sitting on your hard drive collecting dust and literally getting no money at all, is you can maybe find a stock music library website where you can house those tracks that didn't quite make it for the sync market. I think with that strategy, you at least have all of your tracks in the marketplace out there potentially earning you money. The worst thing you can do is have, and I've, I've seen a lot of uh, producers do this, have hundreds of tracks literally sitting on their hard drive, like not even on a stock website, nowhere at all. That's the worst thing you can do because nobody's getting value out of your music and you are certainly not gonna potentially make any money doing it that way. So if you wanna work with both, I would say prioritize sync, use stock licensing websites as your sort of fallback and if, I mean, like I said, for the most part, these these websites are not even going to reject you because they accept pretty much anything, which is, I think, one of their flaws. But at least for you, it can work as an advantage. So at least, you know, for sure you've got something, you know, out there with these stock licensing libraries. Now, if what I've said intrigues you in terms of wanting to get more serious about the sync licensing market, I want to invite you for my free sync starter course, which you can click on right now. It's in the description box. You click on it. Just put your email uh, in, uh, into the box that you see on that website. It costs you absolutely nothing. It's absolutely free. It is a five video series. You can watch all five videos today if you'd like to, or you can do them one at a time. I do send them out to you uh, one at a time via email. That's why you need to put your email into the box. But in this video and in this course that you're gonna watch, I'll show you how to find these companies. I will explain to you what makes a good uh, production uh, music library, what comes make, makes a good TV film sync licensing library so you know how to distinguish the good ones from the bad ones. I'll also give you some premium recommendations, some services that you can sign up for if you'd like to, to save you months, if not years, of trying to do all of this research yourself and not really knowing if you're working with legit companies or not. So I can give you some really valuable resources and tools that can get you closer to working with these libraries, like literally today, if you want to. And I'm also gonna give you just sort of an overview of the business of the sync licensing business and how to navigate it in a way that makes sense and how to do it intelligently and of course like uh, the, the biggest thing you're going to learn from this free course is how to save yourself a lot of time because I stabbed in the dark for many years at the beginning of my career I didn't know what I was doing I didn't have a course like this I didn't have a YouTube channel like this so I didn't really know what I was doing but you have the benefit of having my 14 years of knowledge and wisdom and insights and making all of my mistakes so that you don't have to make any of those mistakes and you can actually get closer to part-time or maybe even full-time income with this industry it's absolutely possible from day one. So I'm going to make you aware of all these mistakes to avoid and to give you a sort of lay of the land so you know how to get started and how to make your best first impression in this business because first impressions obviously do matter. So go ahead and click on that video, uh, sorry, on that link down below and I'd love to see you inside of the course and please do, of course, subscribe to this channel. We put out really helpful, hopefully inspirational and educational videos just like this every single week, every Monday and Wednesday and I'd love to have you join us for this channel so we'd love to see you uh, in the comments down below too. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, something that I didn't cover here, something that you feel that I got wrong, 
always, always comment below. And of course, keep it respectful. I always appreciate those, but I'd love to respond to you and let you know uh, if I can help in any way that I possibly can. So welcome to the Sync My Music channel, and I can't wait to help you get started on your journey to full-time income with sync licensing.